Okay, I on NPI is brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit. Every week we look at the latest, newest stuff from DigiKey and more. Lady, what is this week's INMPI? This week's INMPI is a Routron uh, crystal oscillator kit that I saw pop up on digikey.com slash new. Uh, they got a cool logo, Routron. Apparently they're, uh, like I think, in Miami, Florida. So it's cool. They have really great weather there. It's like and Tron's they- uncle. Raltron. Hey, yeah, Raltron. and they've also got great crystals, so why not? Um, it's a Ramy technology company. I guess they're, yeah, owned by yeah. somebody. But they're a small, they're small business, and they do manufacturing, and they're, they're here in the U.S. So um, let's check out this week's new product. Okay. Okay, so the new product is this uh, crystal resonator design kit. So um, chances are you've used... Uh, this is like the best trapper keeper ever. It's, it basically is a trapper keeper. So, uh, you know, crystals, um, you know, if, you, if you've never used crystals... In your electronics, uh, they're they're not necessarily like the bedazzly type crystals. Instead, um, they're the kind of crystals that come in a metal tin. Uh, usually, you have to have two capacitors with them to uh, stabilize the oscillator. And uh, inside the crystal actually is a little piece of piezo resistant material. It's a it's a crystal. It's not like a a you know amethyst type crystal or like a quartz crystal, um, but it is a, a crystal material. Um, and v- when voltage is applied across it. It uh, vibrates um, and it will, you know, oscillate back at a certain frequency. And so, uh, by setting up in a feedback loop and you kick it once, um, you will get, a, you can get quite precise um, oscillations out of it. So, you know, what are the, these are used for is um, creating a timing signal for microcontrollers and other chips that need to have a, a precise measurement of time. Because uh, you know, you can make an RC oscillator, but RC oscillators. Um, they're not very precise. They have plus or minus maybe five or ten percent. I mean, you know, you can sometimes tune them to get one percent. Uh, but a, a, a crystal oscillator is going to work much, much better. You're going to get, you know, maybe twenty to fifty ppm. That's uh, pulses per uh, million or parts per million um, error rate, which is uh, pretty good for a, um, a a timing oscillator. And so, you know, oftentimes your microcontroller will use a, a crystal also as a um, source for a a multiplier, like a PLL, to multiply that frequency. But we'll, we'll get to that. Um, so, uh, you know, the, the most common crystal kind of used, like in any electronics, is the 32.768 kilohertz crystal. Um, the reason, you know, that's quite an odd number, like why 30, 32.768 kilohertz? Well, um, because that is a 2 to the 15 number. And so if you have a binary counter in your microcontroller, and binary counters are very inexpensive, um, as it counts from zero up to uh, 32767. Uh, um, when it gets to 768, it'll flip over, and um, that overflow will let you know that one second has passed. So it's a very easy way to count one second. So it's used for timing. So in this case, this board that is shown here has a real-time clock. Uh, so it's something that keeps time. It runs for years on a coin cell battery, and it can do that because uh, 32 kilohertz is, is quite slow. It's, it's a common crystal value, but it's slow enough that you're not running very fast electronics. It sips power, like you know, like microamps or less. Um, so there's a lot of different values. So this kit, uh, this, and I'll, I'll open up the kit, of course, and show you the pages inside. Um, it has the most 32 kilohertz crystals. Like it has all sorts of different sizes and packages. Um, and also the load capacitors. Now, yes, uh, oftentimes you have to uh, pick the load capacitors that go with your um, crystal. Like if you look here on uh, this Arduino board on the left, you see there's kind of the metal tin and then above it, there's two little yellow dots. Those are the load capacitors. Sometimes you pick them, but actually sometimes I've noticed uh, certain chips or devices, they actually have the load capacitor, like a tunable number inside the micro or like you kind of have to pick a certain uh, loading value, and so that's why they have multiple, even though, you know, I tend to use like, I don't know, 12.5 picofarad for 32 kilohertz, and maybe I use 18 picofarad for, you know, 12 or whatever, they do give you a full range with multiple um, sizes and also load capacitances. Um, so I showed you the 32, I call them 32 kilohertz, but they're 32.768. Um, they also have a lot of microcontroller, you know, common microcontroller values, like if you have a USB microcontroller, you're going to have six 12 or 24 megahertz because uh, USB is a 12 megahertz protocol, and so you're going to have something that's like a multiple or a divisor of 12. Um, a lot of uh, 
uh, microcontrollers also you'd like to run at like eight or 16 or 20 or 40 uh, megahertz. Those are pretty common values. Um, the microcontroller sometimes runs at that value, but again, it's, it's pretty common for inside the microcontroller, um, there's a phase lock loop. And so there's a non-precise higher speed oscillator that they then tune against the um, precise lower speed oscillator. And that way you can, you know, a lot of my controllers these days, you may have noticed you can actually change the clock speed, um, sometimes even on the fly. So, you know, uh, original AVR mic controllers, I think you could maybe clock divide only, but um, in the SAMD21, you know, you can, you can clock up and you can even overclock uh, if you'd like, or the SAM51, you, you overclocked it to 200 megahertz, even though it only has, I think, a 16 megahertz crystal on it. But, you know, it's important, especially if you're doing radio frequency stuff, you want to have really good, precise crystals. Next up, there are a couple of weird values in here too, like 27.12 megahertz. You're probably like, okay, that's an odd value, and it's not even like a multiple of two. What is up with that? Um, this is a uh, RFID board. So this is a PN532, and it's an RFID uh, transceiver board and RFID for like NTAG and MyFair chips is 32, uh, sorry, 13.56 megahertz. That's the frequency. And so multiply that by two, you get 27.12. So that's another thing. If you have certain RF work you're doing, you'll need to really get that crystal to be the exact multiple. Um, I also, if you're doing, uh, you know, video stuff, old NTSC video, you had to have the color burst crystal and it was like 3.96 megahertz. The, the crystal actually does matter. You don't round up or down. You want to get the exact value. And again, you want to have the, the loading capacitors match because that'll get your value as close as possible to uh, the stated. Um, so inside the binder are all these pages. And I think that these are like, I'll show them also on the overhead, but I think they're pages that are used for like, um, like baseball cards or something. Yeah, this was clever. So each inside there's five, there's a five piece cut tape of each crystal and they're in the little clear pockets and then behind it is a printed out piece of paper um, that goes, that, you know, is behind the clear part and it has um, the part number, the frequency, the stability, um, the load capacitance, the ESR, operating mode, operating temperature and um, size. And then there's also a short URL that you can go to to get the data sheet and also a QR code. One nice thing about the short URL, they got their own URL shortener. Ah. Big ups for that because it would, it would have been really easy to like use the Google one or ah. Bitly. They actually got their own, which is very smart. Don't rely on other people for your URL shortening. What are the chances of like a giant global network going down and no one being able to communicate I or know. anything? Probably not. Okay. Unlikely. Well, it's available on Digikey. That's right. So you can pick this up. Um, Digikey also has capacitor kits and resistor kits. I always recommend having a resistor kit and capacitor kit. I use them all the time. We sell some yeah. you know, in the shop, but DigiKey also has them. Nothing beats having a resistor and capacitor kit. You never know you need some weird value. Sure, you're all here. And a crystal kit, also really useful because sometimes you don't realize you're laying out your board, you get all the parts, you don't realize, oh shoot, like the, you know, the crystal I need is the wrong size or I need a slightly different frequency. Um, I misread it, I thought it was 20, it's 24. The crystals are used in everything, right? So it's it's not a bad idea. Just like you have a, a, your your kit of regulators, your kit of resistors, your kit of connectors, uh, get a crystal kit as All right, well. Show this book? Yes. All right, I'll show this book and then we'll. Okay, so uh, design kit uh, for crystal resonators. Thank you. So there's all instructions on how to use it, and then basically this is how it works. So you see that there's these. Uh, clear pages and they're used for like baseball cards or whatever. And then underneath it, there is for each one a description. Um, so these are like super tiny 1.2 by one millimeter, 32 kilohertz crystals. And then uh, moving up, there is a 3.2 by 1.5. And then they've got um, 32 megahertz. They've got uh, 25 megahertz, 27.1, two, 27, without the one, two, 32, 37. 0.4, 38, 0.4, 40, 48, 16, 20, 24, 25. So they have, a, they have a couple different frequencies in different sizes, but they kind of cover them all. These are all the kind of the most common frequencies I've seen. And of course, once you've uh, used these in your production um, and you're happy with the package and the size and the stability, you can, um, of course, uh, use that part number, type in DigiKey, and then purchase it by the real, your heart's content. So you go, you got 66 different values, and then 55, sorry, five pieces of each value, so multiply that out.
Okay, and that is this week's Eye on MPI. TikTok. Eye on MPI.